I leveled the fixture so that the balls don't roll backwards. I also took out a couple of magnets here just to see what would happen. I tried shielding by adding a piece of eighth inch thick metal all the way around the top of this. It's basically like a pipe. But it basically becomes almost as magnetic as the magnet itself. So it just didn't work. That type of shielding did not work. And the reason I thought that some shielding might work is because if you look at this, this, this has got a lot of pull right here, pulling this ball bearing onto that magnet. It's actually quite a bit stronger than these half inch by one inch magnets that I've been using. But, but if you notice, as soon as this mag, this ball hits this area right here, it's completely released as if there's nothing, no magnetism. And you can see that I thought maybe it was because a lot of the magnetism was being sunk into this like a heat sink takes heat away. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's it or not. These are the steel balls that I've been using. They are chrome plated steel balls. They are not stainless steel. They're shiny, like stainless steel, but they are not stainless steel. Okay? Stainless steel is non-magnetic. If these balls were magnetic, or if they were magnets, I mean, if these balls were magnets, they would be sticking to each other. Okay? Um, they are iron balls that are chrome plated. You can see that uh, they stick to magnets very well. In this fixture, all the magnets on this side, these are the north faces. Point, these are the north face. All the magnets on this side, these are the south face. They're all the same all the way through. If you notice what I'm doing here, by pushing this one magnet, something is also happening to that other ball and moving it away from this ball. And I'll tell you what it is. And you'll see when it comes to the very end right here that the balls actually touch because what is happening is this magnet right here is pulling this ball away from this ball and this ball is obstructing the fields that are pulling the ball this way and you can see that if the balls get too close together they actually obstruct their own fields so uh, that the spacing be between them is critical also to discover what works best once we get into pulling multiple objects through the same field As you can see, this force field is able to pull more than one object through the field at the same time. But there is a, a spacing that we should have between the objects so that it uh, produces the optimum power. This fixture represents one non-parallel force field. It's able to pull more than one object through its field at one time. I'm going to pull nine objects through this force field. And I'm going to have a total of four force fields, not just one like this, but four of them working together. They're going to be turned into a circle. The objects being pulled are going to be mounted on a wheel similar to this one. But this wheel right here has objects mounted every 30 degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to mount objects every 40 degrees. And the objects are going to be metal like this ball, but possibly a different shape. They're going to be connected to a wheel like this. So if it was the magnet that we were using, it would be connected to a wheel like this and be set at every 40 degrees. Okay, the diameter will be bigger than this, probably closer to around 10 inches. Pretend that this piece of paper is this force field right here with the magnets or with the balls going through it. These, these drawings right here, these represent the balls, or this represents the object being pulled, and the space of three spaces in between. So now I have four non-parallel force fields that I'm going to plan on working together. If the objects being pulled out of the force fields are all in alignment with each other like this, then they all have to come off their force fields at the same time. Okay. But since I have a spacing between my objects of three magnets, what I can do is space. I can offset each non-parallel force field 
or actually in this case I'm going to be offsetting the objects being pulled through the force fields so that and they're all going to be connected together in a shaft so it's going to be like four rotors will be connected to a shaft and the objects will be connected to the rotors and by simply offsetting them what will happen is all the rotors working together and all the magnets will pull one magnet off at one time so what we will have is a total of 36 objects are going through the force fields all at the same time and only one is being pulled off the force field at one time so I calculate that that's well over enough, well over enough uh, energy to cause the motor to spin.